More now of our exclusive interview with the wife of Barack Obama, who's in the headlines this morning, not for what she's doing on the campaign trail, but what she's doing off of it. She's a woman who many of us don't know very much about, but behind the scenes, she's a force of nature, one that will not be in the wings much longer. Citing increased campaign and family commitments, on Tuesday, Michelle Obama resigned from her position on the board of the Treehouse Foods Corporation, a major supplier to Walmart, whose labor practices her husband has strongly criticized. It's just one of the many adjustments Michelle has had to make as her husband's run for the White House gears up. Back up, please. Another is the issue of personal security. After unspecified threats and overwhelming crowd sizes, Senator Obama was the first of the 2008 presidential candidates to be assigned a Secret Service detail. And it's a change that their two daughters, 8-year-old Malia and 5-year-old Sasha, have taken in stride. Well, you know, we have Secret Service uh, detail now, which I am extremely grateful for. Um, and people have asked, well, how are the kids dealing with it? And uh, uh, the day that they started, um, the detail was out at the house, and the girls met everybody, and they walked up to the guys and asked them, do you sleep, do you sit down, do you get to eat? They asked all the questions, and then the next morning, we woke up, and Sasha, our youngest one, came down and said, Mommy, are the secret people still here? I said, they're still here. She said, okay. She called them the secret people. <laughs> are they noticing the spotlight? Do, do know, they have any sense of what's going on? Yeah, they know. They, know, they understand that their dad's running for president, um, and but they really aren't directly interested. We, we are blessed with two kids who have the personality to work with this crazy, chaotic life that we have. Do you sometimes feel it would be better for them personally if they didn't have to grow up in the White House. You know, we're looking at the possibility of what they will get from their experience running for president. And what a gift to grow up in the White House, um, to, to see world leaders, to understand how the country is shaped. Um, what a symbol that it will show to so many young boys and girls out there, particularly kids of color, uh, who have never seen themselves in a major way. What a statement that'll be. So we're focused on, on that uh, more so than, you know, worrying about what'll happen, you know. Because if I wanted dinner at the table at 6, then I should have married somebody else. Because <laughs> we've never had that. Michelle first met Barack at a Chicago law firm when she was assigned to be his senior advisor. Though she's quick to point out that she wasn't his boss, there was a spark. Because I went to Harvard and he went to Harvard, the firm thought, oh, well, we'll hook these two people up. So, you know, there was a little intrigue, although I must say that Barack, about a month in, asked me out. And I thought, no way. This is completely tacky. This is my first summer. I've got an advisee, and I'm going to date him? I thought, no, no, I can't do that. And he was like, no one cares. And, you know, so it took about a month or so for him to talk me into going out on our first date. And what was that first date? He was trying to sort of show all his sides. So we went to the Art Institute in Chicago, and we walked along Michigan Avenue and talked. And then we went to see Do the Right Thing. So I saw that he was down socially. <laughs> Did you know then? I knew that I liked him a lot. Um, he was cute and he was funny and he was charming without, you know, being uh, arrogant. Um, just a good guy. The ease with which he connected with people as both a downtown attorney and a community organizer on Chicago's South Side was what really won her over. I thought the ability to transition like that, particularly given his background, I thought this 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 is unique. This is special. I hadn't seen this before. When you said say given his background. Right. What do you mean by that? Well, that he's biracial. He grew up in Hawaii. And I thought, gosh, you know, how many black kids grow up in Hawaii? I had my preconceived notions about him, but I was wrong. Uh, like many people who make assumptions about whether it's Barack or the person in another city or down the street, we do that as people in this country. We label, we put people in boxes, and most of the time we're wrong. And it's really the experience that you have to have with someone, the conversation, the connection. And I was able to do that with Barack, and I fell in love with him. That deep connection has forged a strong partnership, one that Michelle Obama says keeps them grounded in their personal life and ready for whatever the future might bring. We both brought our unique experiences to this thing that we call our family. So I bring the stability piece, but he brings that sort of 
let's try this big thing and wouldn't this be wonderful and look at what we could do and let's not be afraid and I like that balance let's not be afraid they thought long and hard about how his presidential run would affect the family especially where security is concerned they said fear would not rule their decision